What do you do when you're first jumping in on a project with a company? Maybe you're just starting to work with them or you're, you're performing somewhat of an evaluation of their current processes. What are the things that you would really focus on in that? Sure. Situation? If there's one thing I've, I've learned throughout hundreds of projects, it's that not all small scale in-house processes translate when you're trying to scale up. To give you a couple of anecdotal examples, we had a client who initially did all of their content production in-house. This was an agency and each one of their clients had one document, one document with every order brief and finished content <laughs> in it. So they decided they needed to scale up to several hundred orders a month. And what they did was they started sending these briefs to us. So if Acme company needed an order this month or five orders, we'd open up their order brief and scroll through, and I'm not kidding, 30, 40, 50 pages of brief content from you know, as old as three years ago to finally get to the instructions for the new content that they need. And they were like, yeah, just share this with your writer. They'll you know, write the copy and throw it in there and send it back to us. That might work in-house. It does not work when you suddenly need to scale up to two, three, 400 pieces a month. Another part of that problem with the same project is that all of the data that is necessary for those orders, the word count, the audience, the keywords, all in the brief. So this poor content manager who's trying to help this company scale had to go into every one of their briefs and parse this data out and get it into a usable form on a spreadsheet so that we could load 300 orders into our system and get those orders out to the writers with the information that they need. It literally took her every month, two to three days, just to prepare the orders for writers to take. I always like to think if I can get something smooth and scalable, it can be both a supplement to my team or it might be able to replace certain content types. And how do you think about that? I think we all have a choice when it comes to a content project. And, and let me just say this first, scaling up is, it has a different definition to everybody. And depending on what scaling up means to you could dictate what type of team you use. You can totally stay in house and scale up. There are benefits to using an in-house team. They're, they're easier to train. They're right there with you. You can get them trained on your brand's voice, on the structure of your articles. If they have questions, they can turn and ask you. So in-house teams are, are, are great. If you're able to scale up with an in-house team, by all means, but they do come with some drawbacks. For one, salary. If, if you're gonna be paying an in-house writer, probably somewhere in the ballpark, of, what, 40, 60,000 a year plus benefits. And if you don't have the work to keep them consistently going, what are they going to do? There's turnover. What happens when they leave and you need to find somebody else? And one of the key ones to an in-house writer, though, is versatility. You could have a perfect top-of-the-line marketing writer, but when you suddenly need that writer to pivot and do blog posts or some general copy, web, web page copy, not their wheelhouse. And, and I see this every day. We have projects that pivot from local pages to, to category pages to blog posts, and we use different writers based on their strengths. So you, to find that writer who can do it all is like finding the unicorn. Most of them have their strengths and weaknesses, and you're tied to their versatility when you bring them in-house. So there are drawbacks to in-house teams. So what can you do? What seems to be really popular now and for obvious reasons, is working with freelancers. It's more cost effective. You're paying for just what they produce rather than their set 40 hours per week, regardless of what they produce. You can find different writers to produce the different content types, but there are drawbacks with, with the freelancers as well. Working with freelance writers is definitely a viable solution, but only if you have the time to manage it. Oftentimes, depending on how big your project is, it is a full-time job just managing your team. What are the things that if someone doesn't come to the table with them, they're going to have a hard time? And I, you know, I'm thinking about like content strategy briefs, content briefs themselves, you know, imagery, style guides. What, what, what are the things somebody should come to the table with so that they can have a smooth... Uh, Believe transition? it or not, it's not as much as you think it is. As for actual documents themselves, a, a, a brand style guide is always helpful. But even if you don't have one, we're going to dig deep into what your knowledge and pull that information out 
But one thing you can do for that provider to almost guarantee success with your project is to have a comprehensive order brief. Your writer is the quarterback, okay? That writer is gonna execute on what you give them to work with. And if you don't give them much to work with, they're gonna have to ad lib. They're gonna be like, all right, you run to the tree, you go over here and curve out, and, and they're gonna they're gonna handle it on the fly and it's it's not gonna go well. So the writer is the quarterback and the rest of the offense, those are the tools you provide them with. Those are your content briefs and your project briefs. All that guidance comes together from you. You're the coach on the sideline. Come with that order brief that breaks down. This is the intent of this article. This is a goal we're trying to satisfy. These are the keywords we want you to use. Here are the linking requirements. If you've got internal linking, a plan for your internal linking structure, and you need these three pages linked, put it in there. And above all, a detailed outline. If you have a detailed goal of what your content is going to look like and what purpose it's going to serve, map that out for the writer to execute on. The writer is not an SEO person. The writer is not a marketing person. The writer can only work with what you give them. And if it's just a title and a keyword, you're giving them creative license to go in any direction they want. If you need a CTA in there, spell it out. Where's it going? Where do you want it to lead? What are we looking for that reader to do? Tell the writer. They know how to execute on that direction, but they need to know the direction to begin with. All of these things go in an order brief. The better your order brief, the better the deliverable is going to be. You need to put a plan together and communicate that plan to the writer. And it's the order brief that gets that done. How do you work with SMEs? How do you find them that want to write? And when they don't want to write, how do you get that out of their brain? It's, it's got to be the most challenging thing. It is challenging. And, and SMEs are all the rage right now. SMEs are subject matter experts. And these are people who typically have experience in whatever niche it is that you need content for. We take a two-prong approach here. We farm our own pool of writers for experts. And we categorize them in different areas. Like we can offer academic experts. This These are bylined writers who have written in a certain topic. They may not have professional experience in that topic or even academic experience in that topic, traditional academic, but they've been writing about digital marketing for 10 years now. There, there's nothing they don't know. Then we have professional experts. For example, having an article that's bylined by an actual doctor would have more weight than an article that's written by Joe Ryder, assuming Joe Ryder isn't a licensed doctor. So. That's not to say that you have to have an SME because let, let me be clear about writers, especially when you use top tier writers, they're actually two things. They're excellent mechanical writers. The flow is, is good. What they write is logical and well-organized and the punctuation grammar is all in line, but they're also top notch researchers and they have this ability to break down a subject that they might not know anything about and deliver it to your readers in a way that makes them sound authoritative and explains it in an easy to understand way. Those are your top notch writers. They're not SMEs. They come across as though they are, but for the most part, they're not. They're excellent researchers. Sometimes a project calls for an SME, which is somebody who's actually in that field. Those are your doctors, your lawyers, your nurses, people in the digital marketing field, people in banking and finance. Uh, a lot of companies want to have their content written by somebody who's hands-on that topic, who's done it. They went to school for it. They worked in the industry. How do you consider the cost-effectiveness of, of finding these folks? Does it cost a whole lot more to have an SME touch for them to be involved in the project plan or those types of things? Most of the time, a trained doctor is not a writer. A trained lawyer is not a writer. Finding one who can actually write that's the unicorn. Yeah. So for the most part, we don't expect that to happen. And when you're working at scale, trying to find enough SMEs to write your copy is challenging, if not downright impossible. So here's what we do. And this actually helps with the cost effectiveness because believe it or not, doctors won't work on your project for a couple cents a word. They're expensive. You have those regular, highly skilled writers work on the copy itself. And then you have the SME review. When you buy content from a provider, it's ghostwritten. It can be bylined by anyone. So we have writers create the copy, 
and then we have a small pool of SME experts review it and put their name on it as the SME reviewer. This really solves the problem of dealing with an SME who wants 50 cents, a dollar a word to write your articles and getting it back down into that affordable range where you've got regular writers who are strong researchers. Now, I agree with what, what you said for the most part, but there are some non-SME writers who you would never know. Um, right. So yeah. they, they do exist. They can write, they can research, and you would never know that they aren't an expert. But um, they're great writers. They're great they researchers. Are. They're amazing. They pull it off. I, I love that. You can do it. Some Combine them with the SME good. who can't write. And then you get that authoritative content that's well-written and cost-affordable.